All right, our next lesson, we're going to talk about a fairly different concept of ASM. Everything else we talk about, all lessons 1 through 8, and everything else from 10 through 15, we're all talking about different kinds of security, how to add this security and how to add that security and, you know, what they do, how they protect. In lesson 9, what we're going to cover is how to make this whole process much easier for your ASM administrators. Much easier by using parent and child security policies. So let's first talk about the, 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 the uh, pain points of security policy management. So here we've got uh, my ASM and I've got a really great security policy I created for this web application. I got another security policy that I created for this web application and another one for this web application. And this one, and that one, and this one, and that one, and this one. I've got a lot of security policies that I've created for lots of different web applications down here. They all have a varying degree of security. Some of them have a lot of security features turned on. Some just have a couple of security features turned on. That's one of the benefits. That's why we have different security policies, is so that each one can have its own unique security settings. That's a good thing. But there's also some challenges when we're managing all these security policies. To make this easier, to even picture, I'm going to remove some of them and just focus on five, not even looking at all nine. So we have added the idea of file type enforcement. We covered that yesterday morning. File type enforcement. Every security policy should have file type enforcement turned on. So we had, we had to go in and physically enable file type enforcement for each one of these policies. It wasn't a lot of work, but we had to do that. We also added some different attack signatures and signature sets. And we even created custom signatures and so forth. And we had to add those set signature sets to every security policy different custom signatures. Uh, yesterday, we also played with geolocation enforcement. And so I wanted to add certain dangerous hot zones to my not allowed list. And I had to do that for each one of these policies. So as I'm doing all this work, you know, it's just a lot of manual work for this policy. And then I got to do a lot of the same stuff for this policy, and a lot of the same stuff for this policy, and so forth. But even more so, so I've got Syria added there. Oh, so even more so, I've got a new hot zone, Syria. So I'm going to add that to this geolocation, but that doesn't affect these ones. I've got a new custom signature I've just created to block a brand new attack. So I've added to this policy, but that doesn't help these ones. So as I'm adding new enforcements of any kind, I had to take into account all of my security policies. And when I'm managing 10s, 20s, 50 security policies, that could be a lot of work. So now I'm creating a brand new security policy for this one. I have to manually turn on file type enforcement. Then I have to manually grab the attack signatures. I have to manually put in all the geolocation hot zones that I want to remove and so forth. Just a lot of overhead, a lot of time taken up by system administrators. Uh, and one other, one other, uh, we'll call it a ch challenge, so to speak, is I don't really have a way to enforce certain requirements. If I'm managing these two policies, I can't really enforce the security that I think is valuable on these policies. I don't manage those policies. So there's really no centralized management of security requirements. That's where the idea of using parent and child security policies comes into play. This is going to solve us many challenges. So I, I first off create what is called a parent security policy. And in the parent security policy, I define certain things that are mandatory, such as file type enforcement. I want every security policy I create from this point forward to always include file type enforcement. 
Attack signatures. I want every security policy to include these four different attack signature sets. Geolocation enforcement. I want all of my security policies to block out Syria and North Korea and wherever else. Those are mandatory settings. But I can also define what are called optional settings, such as data guard. I can say, hey, here are some great data guard settings. We're going to mask these UK uh, ID numbers and we're going to mask these other numbers. It's all available to you if you want to take that security setting. But it's optional. Remember those separate technologies we talked about yesterday with the tax signatures. I can say all of my applications are on Apache, running PHP and MySQL. I know that. So you know what? When you create your security policy, if you want, you can just quickly apply that to your policy. It's optional. So now I've got my policy set up, my parent security policy. Now I'm going to create this new child security policy, brand new security policy. And as soon as I create it, it is automatically going to take all of the mandatory settings from its parent. And then they can also, if they choose to, take one or both of the optional settings as well. Now I'm going to create another policy. Oh, automatically takes those mandatory settings. And in this case, we're going to take the data guard settings. We're not interested in the server technology settings. And this process will continue with each one of these new policies. Uh, this one here, by the way, you'll notice they don't want any of the optional settings. And that's fine. They're optional. This one over here, they're going to take those settings. This one over here is going to take these settings. No optionals. But you'll notice the mandatories were applied to every child security policy. So the first thing this saves, the first pain point, is it makes the creation of new policies much faster because we don't have to apply all of this stuff to it. But the second part that's even more important is I can control certain things here. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't choose data guard there. <laughs> I can control certain things in the parent. Uh, so there's our benefits. Easier, quicker to create security policies, and we now can control the minimum security requirements for every security policy. The minimum being what's in the mandatory. And then optional is just other stuff that we recommend, but isn't required. So here's the big benefit now. I want to make updates. Uh, I have a new attack signature, or no, excuse me, a new geolocation, Syria. So as soon as I add that new geolocation to the parent, it automatically adds it to all the child policies. In addition, uh, I can add, I can continue to add geolocations. So now I'm adding Iran. I can add a new attack signature to my parent. As soon as I add that new attack signature, automatically adds it to all my child policies. They are now all protected with that new attack signature immediately. I also can set data optional settings. So I just created a new custom pattern. But that's not going to go to all of my policies. That's just going to go to the policies that chose to inherit those optional settings. I can remove things. I'm going to take Iran out, they're no longer an issue, and that will automatically remove that from all the child policies. So the real benefit here is I don't have to worry about managing all these child policies individually anymore. I could do 90% of my management here and then just have some individual settings. And that's one of the cool things here is I can still apply things locally. So for example, I can add a geolocation here. That's not going to affect the parent, and it's not going to affect any other child policies. I can add another signature here. That's not going to affect the parent or any other child security policies. I'm going to add another server technology. 
This lets us still have the varying security levels that we wanted. All we can say now is for certain, every one of these has the minimum security that our organization requires. So how do I do this? Very simple. We just do it on our, new, on our create policy page, except when I'm creating my policy, instead of what we've always been choosing up to this point, a security policy, yep. you're now choosing a parent policy instead. Then when you, uh, after you select that, you can still select any policy template type, comprehensive, fundamental, rapid deployment. We can still go in the advanced settings and we can set other things. We can choose the learning mode here that we want to apply to our child policies. We can add the application language. We can add server technologies. We can add uh, IP addresses for trusted IP addresses. And we apply all this to the parent. And then we save that. There's a few more settings there. Then we save that. So now when I've got my policy selected, we can see that this is indeed a parent policy. And you'll see something that you've probably never seen before. We have another new tab over here. The Inheritance Settings tab. So this is where we are now going to determine what is mandatory for all the child policies and what is optional. And in some cases, settings that we don't even want to make optional. So for each one of these, these are all different categories, um, we have three options. So I've got my tax signatures, custom violations, data guard, file type enforcement, headers, HTTP protocol. These are all different categories of security. So I can choose mandatory. All child policies must take those settings. I can choose optional. Each child policy can select to take those settings or not. And then I can choose none. Child policy will, nothing will be set at a child policy for that particular category. And then I save that. And at that point, I could now go in, uh, so we go down here. Ah, oh, yeah, I've got a couple other items here. Parameters, all about the policy building. This is automatic mode, manual mode. IP, trusted IP addresses, all of that, server technologies, and so on. So now, I'm going to create a child security policy. And by the way, before I create this child security policy, I could go to my parent policy and I could add learning and blocking settings, I could add data guard settings, I could add geolocation, geolocation enforcement settings, I could add all these settings to the parent that I want to apply to my child policies. And you'll do that in your exercise. But now, I'm going to create a true child security policy. We started off just like you normally do, give it a name. Still gonna be a security policy. The difference is now we have the parent option. Now we're gonna choose our parent security policy as our parent. What you're going to notice now is other settings are no longer changeable. That is not changeable because that's an inherited setting from the parent that was defined as mandatory. So we can't change that in the child. This is also inherited. Now what's interesting is in some things like server technologies, I cannot remove the server technology from this child policy, but I could actually add a new one. Isn't that interesting? So you can't remove the ones defined by the parent, but you can add a new one if you wanted to. And then down below, you'll just, again, you'll see that a lot of these are grayed out because they were all defined as mandatory parts of the parent. Now we have, for my child security policy, we also have an inheritance settings tab. And this is where you're going to see all of the categories that were marked as mandatory. They are inherited. 
we can't change that in the child. But you'll see that there's a couple, uh, in this case, I'm sorry, there's also a couple that are not inherited. Those are the ones that were set as none in the parent. Don't even worry about those ones. But then, these are the ones that were set as optional. So now, the child policy creator can choose to accept or decline the data guard settings and the header section and the server technology settings. So they're going to accept that and decline those and then save that. Let's take a look at a couple of the pages that you are very familiar with. Starting with our policy properties page. You've been to the policy properties page many times. So on the policies properties page, uh, a couple of these items here, this, this, these, they're grayed out. I cannot change them on the child policy. We also have our learning and blocking settings page. You'll notice some other things here. On the right side of the learning and blocking settings page, you'll see that these are all inherited categories. They can't be changed. These can't be changed. On the geolocations page, these are grayed out. They cannot be removed because they were inherited from the parent. So now when you're working with child and parent policies, there are some differences when you're looking at your child policies. Not everything can be adjusted. But remember, we can still add something. And as a reminder, if I add Korea, North Korea, to this child policy, that's not going to affect the parent, and it's also not going to affect any other child policies. It's only adding it for this one. So, in this exercise, you're going to do a couple of things. You're going to start off by creating a parent policy. Then you're going to define the inheritance settings for all the child. Some that you're going to leave as mandatory, some you'll make optional. Then you're going to go in and you're going to set some settings at the parent level. You're going to do some learning and blocking settings. You're going to change some of the violation settings, some of the block settings on the learning and blocking settings page. You're going to apply data guard. You're going to apply some geolocation enforcement, uh, disallowed air sections. And then you're going to create a couple child security policies and you're going to examine what items have been inherited and can't be changed, what items have been inherited and can be changed, um, and so forth. And uh, that needs to be changed there. I noticed, because that used to just say, uh, that's now an optional, or uh, if time permits to create a second one. So they only create one, they're only going to create one child security policy and then do all that, and then if they have time, they'll create a second.